Polio is an, <clears throat> a viral infection uh, that can cause paralysis. It usually affects children, and early on it was more common in the mid and upper socioeconomic groups. The first uh, epidemic of polio in the United States was in 1916, and at that time there were about 27,000, mostly children, who were paralyzed. After that, almost every single summer there was an outbreak of polio, and by 1952 there were almost 58,000 uh, cases in a summertime. The virus uh, enters the body through the mouth, and then it goes into the gastrointestinal tract where it multiplies. And from there it spreads into the bloodstream. And unless the virus is neutralized in the bloodstream, it can spread on into the nervous system, into the spinal uh, fluid and up into the brain. At first, uh, it's pretty innocuous uh, seeming. A child presents with a, a runny nose or complains of a sore throat. Uh, and then, uh, in a matter of time, spikes a very high fever, breaks out in a drenching sweat. And then these terrible electric shocks begin. They go down the arms, down the legs, down the back, and cause such terrible muscle spasms that the child's twisted into some bizarre posture. Then the fever suddenly goes away. And one might think that's the end of it. Uh, but within a day or two, suddenly paralysis can uh, come on with uh, weakness of both legs, of an arm. It's almost impossible to predict uh, what muscle group or groups are going to be uh, afflicted. Then some people recover. Within a week or uh, months, uh, they get full recovery. But others go on to spend the rest of their lives in braces or wheelchair or confined to bed. If the poliovirus affects the brain, up at the base of the brain, that's where uh, the swallowing uh, center is. And then it's awful. Uh, the child tries to swallow some water, it goes out the nose. Uh, he or she can't even swallow their own saliva, so they foam at the mouth. And eventually, uh, back in the earlier uh, years, uh, children would uh, really drown in their own secretions. Polio was really endemic. It, it's been around for years and years and years, and uh, so uh, most mothers had antibodies to it and would transfer that uh, to the infant, uh, and uh, the infant would be fine. But as, a, as a better sanitation came about, which then did away with some other terrible diseases like diphtheria, uh, what it did was it, many, many mothers were never exposed to uh, polio, and so uh, their antibodies, or, or even if they had antibodies, as soon as uh, they were off and the child had no immunity, uh, then they could get polio. Uh, because it, it no longer did almost everyone have a natural, uh, naturally acquired resistance uh, to it. Uh, the last case in the United States actually was in 1979, and uh, so uh, it doesn't exist in the United States anymore, which is great, but it does uh, in uh, several uh, developing countries uh, still have cases. And uh, there is a, a major uh, thrust uh, supported uh, by the Gates Foundation and the World Health Organization and others to uh, eradicate uh, polio uh, through the use of education and vaccination. Many people who were born after 1955 when the polio vaccine became readily available uh, don't really have a concept what it's like uh, to live under the threat of polio. If you try to imagine what it's like if we had in the United States outbreaks of Ebola every summer and there was no way to prevent it, that's what it was like. Uh, before the polio vaccine.